From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Breaking news overnight, a border crossing finally opens in the Middle East, enabling trucks to carry humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. But how long it will remain open is yet to be known. Two American women are now free after being held hostage by Hamas in Gaza for nearly two weeks. But as many as 200 other people taken from Israel are still in captivity this morning. And closer to home, there's something in the water in one Bay Area town that you definitely don't want to drink. Good morning and thanks for starting your day with us. Today is Saturday, October 21st. I'm Max Darrow. Breaking news in the Middle East this morning. The border crossing between Egypt and Gaza opened today, allowing trucks carrying humanitarian aid into Gaza for the first time since October 7th. A 20-truck convoy entered Gaza through the Rafah border crossing with supplies and aid for those who live there. Since the intensified fighting began, many in Gaza were without food or water, and hospitals are in urgent need of medical supplies and fuel for their generators. UN officials say this delivery is filled with life-saving supplies, but note that aid is still insufficient. An official with the UN World Food Program says Gaza needs many more trucks and a continual flow of aid. A celebration took place as those trucks passed through the Rafah border crossing, which is the main route in and out of the Gaza Strip that isn't controlled by Israel. However, it's not clear how long the opening will last. This aid comes less than a day after Hamas handed over two American hostages at the border, the first of roughly 200 people held captive since fighting began. At this point, it's not clear if there was any connection between the two. The two newly freed American hostages have now been reunited with family inside Israel. As CBS News' Tina Krauss reports from Tel Aviv, hundreds more are said to remain in Gaza while Israel prepares for a ground invasion. This is the first photo of Judith and Natalie Renan, moments after they crossed the border from Gaza back to Israel and into freedom. We share in the relief that their families, friends, and loved ones are feeling. But there are still 10 additional Americans who remain unaccounted for uh, in this conflict. We know that some of them are being held hostage by Hamas, along with an estimated 200 other hostages uh, held in Gaza. Hamas said it released the mother and her 17-year-old daughter in an agreement with the Qatari government for humanitarian reasons. President Biden spoke to the two Americans on the phone after their release, assuring them the U.S. government will fully support them. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, for two weeks. I haven't been sleeping for two weeks. Tonight I'm going to sleep good. I spoke with my daughter earlier today. She sounds very good. She looks very good. She was very happy and she's waiting to come home. Saturday marks two weeks since the massacre that began the war. Now the question remains, when will Israeli defense forces launch their ground assault into Gaza to take on Hamas? The Israeli government made a decision, gave green light to the army, wiped them out. Palestinian health officials say more than a dozen people were killed in an airstrike near a Gaza church where many were taking shelter. Israel's military said it was targeting a militant command center. And a sharp warning for all Americans who are traveling overseas. The State Department says use extreme caution because of the potential for anti-American violence around the world. We talked to travelers at SFO who said they were alert but determined not to change their plans. Well, that's the world we live in, and it's a complicated situation, but we're not staying home. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, we've, we've, we've planned this for a long time, and we're going to go through. The State Department says if you go abroad, be especially careful in busy tourist areas. And you can stay up to date on the very latest from Israel and Gaza on KPIX.com and streaming on the free CBS News app. Paul, how's the weather looking here at home? The changes that started to kick in yesterday are going to continue as we head through the rest of this weekend. More cloud cover overhead today, a mix of clouds and sunshine, and the cool temperatures are going to be sticking around both today and again on Sunday. Tomorrow also brings in the potential for some scattered showers. This system isn't going to have access to a lot of moisture, but it's a decent chance for at least some scattered shower activity Sunday. Be flexible with any outdoor plans just to be on the safe side. Temperatures today topping out below average. The warmest spots will only be in the low to mid 70s, 60s around the bay and along the coast. Temperatures tomorrow almost exactly where we top out today. 
In Yontville, people are starting their weekend with a warning about their water. As our Andrea Nakano tells us, for residents and businesses there, the latest E. coli warning is leading to an unhappy sense of deja vu. This is the second boil water order in Yontville in about the last three months. According to the California Department of Veteran Affairs, it found E. coli in the entire system. It wasn't a typical workday for Natalie in Yontville. I'm on my way into work today. I got a message from my boss that there is going to be a notice for me to boil water. That meant steering clear of the tap water like many other businesses in town. Local restaurants bought out the ice at this market as bottled water flew off the store shelves. But one thing did help make Natalie's job a little easier. And we also have a huge filter system on our espresso machine, so that luckily helped us out there. The water comes from the Rector Reservoir, which is managed by the California Department of Veteran Affairs. A spokesperson said the E. coli finding is unusual and the boil notice is for, quote, maximum safety. Loretta lives at the veteran's home and got the notice earlier in the day. They have this notice up there, boil your water. Really, why? Well, we think we have E. coli. This has impacted 838 customers, but also the roughly 1,000 residents that live at the veteran's home. At this point, there's very little information on the source of contamination. It would be nice to get the facts, you know, and um, I really would like that. I feel like it's something that's happened in the past, and when it happened, it was concerning then, and it's still concerning now. They took more samples today, and will take samples again tomorrow. If those come up negative, the boil water order could be lifted as soon as Monday. San Francisco's restaurant scene has struggled since the pandemic, with many popular spots going dark. Take a look at this. It's a glimpse of just some of the places that have closed their doors in recent months. But now there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Our Betty Yu takes us to a spot downtown that's technically not even open yet. But even so, it might take you months to get a table. No. It's San Francisco's splashiest opening yet. Choto Mate is the city's biggest rooftop restaurant and the first West Coast location for the global chain that has locations in London and Miami. The massive venue, which offers Japanese Peruvian food, has spectacular city views, a wraparound terrace, sushi bar, and DJ lounge. The concept on top of the former Macy's men's store in Union Square has been two and a half years in the making. It takes entrepreneurs and creative thinkers to, to take situations like this and be confident and to do new things and that's what's going to stimulate the economy can't talk about it we have to do something right and yeah. and we're employing 150 people we'll be paying taxes of course so this can only be good surely uk-based owner and founder kurt stazar is betting big despite narratives about the city's challenges i think timing has been very good for us because whilst everyone's quite nervous to come here it means that we're the only ones that have but just growing up and and, and always had san francisco as a special place you know um, in my mind as a child watching movies as a kid and Having heard about it and, and later on visiting, you know, I always felt that this would be perfect for us. The line to get inside its grand opening celebration stretched down the block. And Kurt said within 30 minutes of opening its reservations, 3,000 requests came through. About two miles away in Cal Hollow, another hotly anticipated Asian fusion restaurant and lounge is headed into its first official weekend of business. Blue Whale on Union Street comes from chef Ho Chi Boon, who first opened Hakkasan and later Empress by Boon in San Francisco. This city for chef who is a, a newcomer myself, I'm, I'm not a, a native, but I've been here over 30 years. This city means so much to all of us and he really wants to give back to the community. This is another opportunity to really give back and just kind of um, show the city that it's worth the investment. The space, which was formerly occupied by Osha Tai, <laughs> sat empty for six years. Blue Whale has a dining room, bar, and outdoor patio. I have been kind of seeing the construction happen for what seems like months now, so, but really exciting to try it, and it is really great to have another option in the neighborhood. We only hear the negative. We never hear the positive. And there are so many great restaurants in San Francisco, and I've yet to find one that I haven't enjoyed thoroughly. That was Betty Yu reporting. Choto Mate opens officially later today.